the Fade 5 Podcast with Brad Evans and Nate Lundy. Place your bets, you jack wagons! Brad the Big Noise Evans here, joined by the good... Uh, Daniel Lundy, it is indeed another edition of the Feed at Pie podcast. And oh my goodness, the smorgasbord of sports is delightful. Feast week is already underway. We have day basketball going on. I am feverish for some action, Lundy. So whether it's on maybe the color chart, what if you want to go that direction, or the gridiron, let's uh, make some college cash here on the Fade 5 Pod. Your favorite uh, wager uh, on the junior gridiron. What is it, me amigo? Uh, I think uh, first and foremost, folks, uh, as, I, as I look at Brad here, um, if we hit one of these bets tonight, let's buy Brad um, like a light bulb. Uh, because that room you're in, yes. uh, it's it's just a dungeon, dude. We got it. We I've committed crimes, Lundy. They're interrogating me here momentarily. I just, I, I just, I, I, I just can't. It's just, it's just. There's something weird going on here in that room <laughs> that you're in. Um, I've actually got uh, uh, not one, not two. I've got three money line dogs in college football that I like tomorrow uh, coming up tomorrow. I will share those with you when we get to bonus time. But let me start off on the plus bus here for college. With a two-legger for tonight, we're going to alt-line both games this evening. Uh, you've got uh, UTSA taking on, uh, I don't even care who, uh, they're just going to pound them into the ground. Yep. Um, so we're looking at UTSA, and then a little Pac-12 after dark on a Friday, uh, which really describes the vast majority of my college life at Oregon State. <laughs> um, so uh, here's what we're going to do. We are going to take CU up to plus 10 and a half. Smart. Just got to keep it 10 or less. There's a decent shot that Dion and company actually pull off the upset against the Cougs because they have just fallen off a cliff here over the course of the last month or so uh, uh, over the course of conference play. So we're going to take uh, CU up to plus 10 and a half, and then we're going to take the Roadrunners of UTSA down to minus nine and a half. So I just need them to win by double figures. Uh, they're favored by, I think the last time I saw the spread was 17. Um, so I'm pulling this down by almost a full touchdown, basically. Uh, CU plus 10 and a half, UTSA minus nine and a half. Put that together at FanDuel, Brad. Nice and simple, plus 108. Oh, that's quite sexy. And I'm 100% with you on uh, Dion and company possibly getting the dub against a wazoo here on a, a Friday night. Uh, going to the college grid are my uh, favorite wager just on the standard line. The University of Virginia, yes, two win University of Virginia Cavaliers. I think we're going to cover the four at home, uh, at home against the Duke Blue Devils at a minus 110 juice. Uh, that one available at BetMGM. If you want to go money line at plus 160, I don't entirely hate it either. Uh, you might say, okay, UVA for real Evans. Well, look what they have done here of late. They won. At North Carolina, major upset there. They took Miami on the road to overtime, but lost that game. And they lost by only seven to the University of Louisville. Far superior clubs than what Duke is right now with a backup quarterback. And Loftus, who's only completed 50% of his pass attempts. Uh, no Riley Leonard. He's done so for the season. I look at Duke offensively over the entire year, uh, putting points on the board has uh, been a bit of a struggle for them. They are number 89 in EPA per play offense. I was saying defensively, top three in the country, EPA per play defense. You look at Virginia outside the top 100 in EPA per play offense, in EPA per play defense. But recency bias, oh, yes. It's a hell of a drug. I'm injecting it in my veins. I say the Cavaliers pull off a shocker special of sorts, uh, but building safety first into it. I'll take them on the standard line, plus four, minus 110 juice against Duke at BetMGM. With those bets on the board, let's get after it with another edition of the Fade Five. Number five. Numero Cinco on the NFL edition of the countdown on this Friday. Let's go to the Mile High City in a matchup between the Denver Broncos, uh, Lundy's My Little Ponies, and the Minnesota Vikings, a, and the representative from the land of the 10,000 Lakes, Josh Dobbs, one of the few good stories of this NFL season. I believe he hits the over yet again on rush yards. Minus 115 juice at BetMGM on that over. 
over 29 and a half. Well, we've seen that number climb. It opened at 26 and a half. That's what I grabbed it at. If you follow me and the always on the X, trying to give it to you, spreadsheet at Noisy Huevos. That is a number that it opened at. But I would still take the over on the 29 and a half. Now, the downside here is this. The Broncos have only allowed one quarterback to reach 30 yards on the ground. That was Patty Mahomes. He went for 31. They've got up to 17.7 rush yards per game. And the primary reason why is they don't apply any pressure whatsoever on the pocket. Dead last in pressure rate at 16.2% uh, 16 in the NFL. But Dobbs is still learning the offense. And uh, V, you know, doesn't get his first read locked in, his second read locked in. He locks in, tucks the ball, and takes off. He's averaging 6.2 rush attempts per game on the season, 36.8 rush yards per game on the year, and has hit the over in seven of nine contests. I think he's going to land somewhere in the 35 to 40 range. So under the prime time lights on Sunday night football, give me the over on Dobbs, 29.5 rush yards against the Broncos, minus 115 at Bet MGM Lundy. Or follow. I'm kind of excited to see what Dobbs does with the fact that he actually has like, I don't know, a signal, uh, a guy calling plays that you know <laughs> kind of knows what he's doing uh, instead of the dysfunction that was existing in the desert uh, yeah. for him. So, yeah, uh, this is uh, kind of an auto play for me uh, in this matchup against uh, Denver because you're talking about the pressure, but even with what Denver's defense has done. And I tell everybody, if you're trying to figure out what to look at with this Sunday night game this weekend, you cannot, and I cannot stress this enough, you cannot look at the season numbers for Denver because it's going to get absolutely skewered because of that 70 burger that they gave up to Miami the couple of weeks back to back where they just looked awful um, for as much um, slings and arrows that uh, Vance Joseph has taken uh, since returning back here to Denver as the D.C., he's actually got this defense doing what it's supposed yeah. to be doing here over the last couple of weeks. So don't pay attention to that. Pay attention to what you're seeing out of Denver here over the course of the last few weeks. Uh, this game makes me nervous as hell uh, from a Broncos standpoint because Dobbs can do it with his legs. I think it could get a little interesting uh, in Denver on Sunday night. So I love this prop. Obviously, I liked it more when it was sitting at, what, 26 and a half? Yeah. Um, as opposed to the 29 and a half. But I do think he hits that 30 mark. So jump on this one before it climbs even higher. Hey, Vance Joseph, do us a solid dial up the pressure and Dobbs take off. Number four. Numero Quattro here on the Fade 5 Podcast. Let's go to uh, another quarterback prop and live in the land down under this time on Geno Smith of the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, going to L.A. to take on the Rammies. I'm uh, taking the under on pass yards. That number's sitting at 253.5. It's down three yards from the open at 256.5, and, and I still think it's too high. Uh, the juice on this, minus 115. They're at DraftKings. Yeah, you look at what he did last time he faced uh, the Rammies. That was way back in week one. Uh, uh, he threw for like a buck 12 in that game. Uh, it's going to be significantly higher than that uh, second go around. But uh, I don't think he's going to escape the 230s, quite honestly, because you look at the Rams, only three quarterbacks have gone over this number against them uh, this season. Uh, they're giving up a respectable 7.19 pass yards per attempt, but only uh, also allowing 231.1 pass yards per game to opposing QBs. Uh, Geno's been under this number four times this season. Season and he's not exactly uh, cranking out a whole lot of deep balls. Number 20 in the NFL and air yards accumulated this season. Yes, even with DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett, some premier field stretchers, but not really taking advantage of them. So with all that evidence uh, submitted to court, uh, the verdict there is the under 253.5 pass yards against LAR for Geno Smith. Minus 115 at DraftKings. A Lundy, fade or follow. Just keep bringing that number down. Just keep bringing it down, 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 down. Um, I agree with you. I think this it was way overinflated, and I still think it's inflated at anything that's above 250. I see him finishing 230s, maybe. Um, maybe even lower than that. So anything that you can find that is in the 250s. So if you're listening to the pod and it's closer to kickoff time, uh, on Sunday and you decide to do this, if it still is in the 250s, take the under on it. If it keeps climbing, if it keeps going down, then I would start to get away from it or I'd play an alt total, something like that, or look for a different prop that I like in the game. But right now, if it stays at 250, it's too high for me. 
Yeah, way too high. Make some greenbacks on Gino with that under. Number three. Numero Trace here on the NFL Week 11 edition of the Feed 5 Countdown. Let's go with an Oregon State Beaver uh, who I think is going to be slapping the tail. That is other than Luke Musgrave. I'm taking the over on the rookie tight end for Green Bay on receiving yards. That number sitting at a lowly and highly achievable over there of 28 and a half minus 115 juice available there at DraftKings. I know what you're thinking. Uh, but Brad, the quarterback situation is dire straits right now with Jordan Love in Green Bay. He royally sucks. Uh, there's a lot of truth uh, to that belief and that statement. But here's the good news. You're playing the L.A. Chargers. If he can't get it done, Love, I'm talking about, against this secondary, there is no hope for him t- uh, to have any kind of turnaround. LAC is number 26 and pass EPA defense this season. They're giving up. A staggering 9.83 pass yards per attempt. And most importantly for this prop, uh, 68.3 yards per game to the tight end position. Seven plus size targets have hit the over on this offering. And you look at Musgrave of, you know, running 25.3 routes per game, averaging a robust 10.8 yards per reception. He is number seven at the position and average depth of target, also known as a dot. And most importantly, he is number one in average separation per target as tracked by playerprofiler.com. And the trend is indeed, my friend, uh, he's at the over on this in four of his last five games. Lundy, uh, you're going to you know, just completely discredit your college degree and everything about Corvallis if you feed me on this. So I dare you to do so. Give me the over. Luke Musgrave, 28.5 receiving yards, minus 115 at DraftKings. Lundy, made her follow. Uh, Brad, I, they gave me a degree. I don't really know why. <laughs> um, or I don't really even, frankly, remember what I did uh, to earn it. Um, I, I, I mean, I don't, um, I vaguely remember some classes, um, kind of mixed in there. Uh, but frankly, I can find my way around the bars in downtown Corvallis better than I can around campus. So uh, (laughs) just letting you know, uh, just in case, uh, I think, uh, look, I'm going to follow because of all the points that you just made, but I do want to make it very clear that anything associated with Oregon state, uh, don't talk to me. Uh, don't talk to me until late on Saturday because Woo! this game, one. this game on Saturday night. And here's the problem, and and I'll give you the early preview of bonus time. I'm not touching the game on Saturday. I will, and I'll and I'll tell you why. It's because there's way too many people that are on Oregon State to win this one at home, and it's making me nervous as hell. Uh, there's a reason why they're favored. That's all I'm going to say. We will leave it at that. But let's belly up to the bar right now because there is an opportunity with a special promo code for people to earn some free bets. Lundy, give us the details. Yeah, how do you feel about $250 in bonus bets? And, and you can do it on – you earn them on any bet. Yes, that's right. You could sit back. You could put a dollar on the most ridiculous yeah. parlay you've ever put together in your life. And bam, ESPN Bet is going to trigger you to have $250 in bonus bets. Now that ESPN Bet has gone live, they have partnered with us, and they want to give you that opportunity to get that $250 in bonus bets. All you got to do is use our promo code. And yes, it's the Mountain Hawks. We're talking about <laughs> Lehigh, uh, shall we? That's your promo code, Lehigh. It's so ridiculous, it'll be easy for you to remember. So what I want you to do, grab Grab your portable device right here, flashed in front of you. Make sure you download that ESPN Bet app. And when you sign up, there is a spot. It's plain and simple. It says promo code. All you got to do is put ours in, Lehigh, L-E-H-I-G-H, Lehigh, and you're going to get the $250 in bonus bets. Check out the brand new ESPN bet. It's just launched, and there's some cool stuff you can do in there, the no touchdowns. You start to get crazy like Brad and I used to with the no home runs earlier this summer. They are one of the few books that offers that opportunity to you, so check it out. Get it downloaded, but please do us a solid and use that promo code Lehigh when you sign up with ESPN bet. Yeah, the uh, colors of Lehigh are utterly uh, just ugly, but (laughs) what is beautiful are the free bets being offered with that promo code at ESPN Bet. Number two. 
Nimrod O's here on the feed at five podcast. Trey McBride, uh, put a ring on it and crank the Beyonce in the background. Give me the over 53 and a half for receiving yards against Houston in a game with a lot of pew, 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 pew shootout appeal. Minus 115 juice available there at DraftKings. Uh, this guy is surging right now at the right time for all those trying to face uh, uh, you know, or, or actually earn a postseason berth in your fantasy football league. So if you acquired them off waivers, congratulations. You're reaping major benefit, and that's got to keep on rolling here in week number 11 because they look at Houston, number 25, and pass EPA defense on the season. They've also allowed the fifth most tight end yards this year, giving up exactly 63.9 receiving yards per game to the position. Uh, four plus size targets have been the overall on this, uh, but you look at McBride, a guy that is top five in yards per target, yards per route run, and yards per catch at the position. He's at the over in three of his last five, and it doesn't matter who is under center. Of course, it could be the Dachshund of the Desert and Kyler Murray. He had a season-high 130-plus receiving yards last week in Murray's first game back off the knee injury. So instant chemistry and rhythm, uh, that's going to carry over and a really thump, I think, the sports books here if you bet on the over. So to recap, McBride on that over, 53 and a half receiving yards in H-Town. Somebody back and knocking the boots. Yeah, it's going to be Trey freaking McBride at a minus 115 juice at DraftKings. Lundy, fade or follow. You know, I actually saw this at 54 and a half at one point. So Over fact, still! Yes, yeah, st- I, I would still play the over on that one. This one just aligns well against Houston. It aligns well with Kyler Murray back under center. There's just a lot of things where you've got the planets pointing at this one with Trey McBride. This tight end prop is actually, of all the different uh, tight end props that we can snag, there's another guy I'm going to bring up here in bonus time. But um, there's some really solid tight end props that you can do. Brad already brought up Musgrave. We're talking about McBride. Uh, I'm going to talk about Sam Laporta here in a minute. Um, There's some really favorable matchups when we're talking about the big guys on the end of the line. Yeah, no doubt about the Bridezilla. Bet on him. Number one. Numero uno. Oh, you could have guessed it here on the Fade 5. Revenge game for mandatory Montgomery. Yeah, Dave Montgomery going against his former employer in the Chicago Bears. So on this SGP, come with me if you're buying what I am selling. I say mandatory Montgomery scores a touchdown. And Detroit simply gets the win on the money line. Plus 105. Yeah, plus money, believe it or not. When you put those two together, uh, built at BetMGM. Dan Montgomery, uh, back to doing what he normally does. And that's scoring a whole hell of a lot of touchdowns. He even gave up one. He did an interview uh, this week. I don't remember where exactly. Uh, with Jameer Gibbs. So they're, they were doing the interview together. And he admitted when Gibbs scored that goal line touchdown, that he waved him in to stay on the field, even though the coaching staff wanted him to trot off the sidelines and take that carry of the goal line. He's like, no, nah, young man, get yours. Get your bag. Get your six. And he scored, so he did him a solid. What does that tell you? Montgomery is the staple goal line back, as he has been when healthy this entire season for Day Chua, and that shall continue. Yes, the Bears are number two in EPA rush defense. One of the saving graces of this awful team. Uh, they've allowed, though, nine total touchdowns to running back position, though giving up just 3.14 yards per carry. Montgomery in seven games, uh, 30 red zone touches. Excuse me, six games he's played in. Seven of the goal line touch variety, just extraordinary use. Usage inside the 20 is converted. Seven touchdowns of the year. RB19 as well. And yards after contact per attempt. And you know the Lions are going to bludgeon Chicago through the air with a whole lot of Jared Goff, uh, presumably to Amon Ra, 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 St. Brown. Uh, so they're going to live inside the red zone. And when you get those opportunities, you know mandatory Montgomery is going to get ball to belly and hopefully punch one and so to recap on this sgp my top play nfl week 11 david montgomery yeah it's mandatory for him to find the end zone in detroit to get the win both those events occur plus 105 at bet mgm lundy better follow you know i sit around uh every friday and wait for you to find a way to work david montgomery into the podcast yeah it's minus 5,000 every week 
Yeah, it re- it, it honestly is. It's the worst odds uh, in existence. Um, it, it 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 really really is. Um, so uh, sure, I mean, I just I've gotten to the point. I'm just used to this by now. It's yeah. just David Montgomery is going to find his way into this shit in one form or another every single damn week. So sure, Detroit money line just because it's at home. You're going against the Bears. You know that's fine. David Montgomery, of course, he's going to score a touchdown because that's, you know, basically what he does. So, okay, fine. I'm, I'm serious. I just sit around and wait for this crap every week. Yeah, uh, well, because it, it continuously makes boring. people Brad, Brad, it, it's But it's boring. It's like a couple that's been married for 40 years. I'm just, I'm used to this crap. Sprinkle in something exciting every now and then, would you? Jeez. Well, you know, I'm all about the missionary position and making some money in the process. Uh, with those bets already on the books, let's go to some more and bonus time. Again, we got early feast week action going on. It's the most glorious sports betting time of the year, given the confluence of all the various balls in the air. So, Lundy. Uh, please share whatever you got for me. Uh, maybe you're dropping the puck, making some bucks. Maybe it's uh, action with the round ball or on the gridiron. Uh, just give me your full card. Let's go. Uh, let's rock and roll. Let me start uh, on the ice for you today. There's only three games, but again, there's one early because they're over in Sweden. I'm not going to touch that one as much as I think the Maple Leafs will wind up winning, and they probably will. I don't know that I'm going to throw anything down on that again because these guys are playing all the way over in Sweden. Weird stuff happens. Yesterday, I told you to take the under, and there were nine freaking goals scored in the game. So yeah, that tells you don't listen to this guy when they're going to play over in Sweden. Uh, but there is one that I do like. Winnipeg is at home against Buffalo. Uh, Tage Thompson is hurt for Buffalo, which just freaking sucks. I love that kid. Um, but he's going to be out for a while. Buffalo is not going to be the same without him. Winnipeg has looked very good of late. And if you look at the last seven times that these two teams have played, it has been six or fewer goals in all of them. So I just did a nice, simple SGP over at BetMGM. I'm taking the total all the way up to eight and a half and playing the under uh, on that one. And then Winnipeg just on the money line. If you put those two together, you're looking at plus 100 at BetMGM. If you want to do the total at seven and a half and then play the under, you can actually push that up to plus 120. But to be safe, I'll take the eight and a half. I'll bounce it down on the under. And then again, Winnipeg on the money line, those two together at BetMGM. Uh, and by the way, BetMGM right now, the only book that has those posted up and ready for you this morning, you get that one at plus 100. Let me go to the NFL. I've got an SGP in that Bears-Lions uh, game um, that I like, that I put together at BetMGM. And I'm actually kind of, it, it's plus 300. And it's, oh. a, it's a three-legger. That's all it is. Hmm. So follow me on this one, Brad, because I was actually kind of surprised. And you can put this together in other places. And you can find different thresholds. And I'll tell you why I did bet him GM here in a second. Give me Amon Ross St. Brown to have 70 or more yards receiving. Yep. Sam Laporta to have 40 or more receiving yards. And then give me Jameer Gibbs for 20 or more. Oh, love it. Brad, that's it. And that's plus 300 right now. Take my money. At MGM. Part of the reason that I like it, folks, is I was looking at some of the other sites. First of all, uh, there's a couple of the other sites, Caesars, uh, uh, FanDuel, that don't even have some of the alt lines posted for these guys yet. Bet MGM does. At DraftKings, you can basically do this same parlay, but their threshold for Gibbs is 25. And I like it a lot better at the 20. So I'm willing to bump up my threshold in particular for Amon Ross St. Brown to be at 70. So again, uh, uh, St. Brown, 70, Laporta, 40, Gibbs, 20. All of those receiving yards happen. It's plus 300 at Bet MGM. And obviously, if you wanted to try to correlate it together, you could probably find a good number for Jared Goff in passing yards. Since 225, go. And if you add that in there, that'll give you even more of a uh, bump in terms of the payout. So anyway, there's one that you can be able to play. I'll have more as we get closer to the weekend. I already told you that I'm not touching the Oregon State game. I'll leave that one to you. I know you're going to talk about it coming up, but I sure as shit am not going to jinx my team when they've got a chance over the next couple of weeks to play spoiler in the final season of the Pac-12 because they've got Washington and Oregon back-to-back. I told you there are three Moneyline dogs that I like this weekend. They are not massive dogs. They're all right around three points. But let me give you these three. You can get uh, UNLV to beat Air Force tomorrow at plus 135 
at Caesars. This one is in Colorado Springs. It is at home for the Zoomies, but here's the deal. They have lost back-to-back games now to Army and on the road against Hawaii, and in those games, they have committed, I need both hands, 10 turnovers in those two games. And the Falcons are going to have their backup quarterback. I think this Mm -hmm. is ripe for the Rebels to come into the academy and beat Air Force straight up. So I will take it at a plus 135. That's not all. Give me Army to take out Coastal Carolina. That one's plus 140 at DraftKings. This is just a matchup thing. And I think Army built up a little bit of confidence here coming off of that win at Mile High Stadium in Denver over Air Force where they absolutely spanked the Falcons. Um, So I'll take Army as a dog as well. And then staying in the Mountain West, let me talk about Utah State. They will oh, yeah. be at they're at home in Logan taking on Boise State. This one is just all it, this is a little bit less about me fading Boise State and more about Utah State who is at home and if the Aggies win tomorrow, they're bowl eligible. They have all of the motivation you could ask for, and they're going to be at home. So give me Utah State money line against Boise State at home, plus 154 at DraftKings. By the way, that one is a plus 140 at Caesars. So take the extra juice at the plus 154 at DraftKings. And then finally, just because I like to tease everybody with shit like this, if you take all three of those money line dogs and put them together. It is a plus 1302. Oh! If you're feeling if you're feeling like just dropping, I don't know, 5 bucks or something like that in case I go 3 and 0. Oh. Um so those are my three dogs that I like for tomorrow. I'll have more for you up on the spreadsheet, but for the moment I yield the floor to the gentleman from Illinois. Oh, all the eggplant emojis uh, with that juice. That was absolutely scintillating, sensational, and ridiculous, and downright erotic. Uh, nowhere close to that, but here is a Team Huevos parlay play of NFL on the main slate here in Week 11. Uh, let's go to the matchup between Washington and New York. Yeah, you need a reason to watch this, so I'm giving you one. So on this, uh, Quattro Lager, Lake Numeruno, Sam Howell, 225-plus pass yards. Uh, he is the NFL leader in in passing yards, got to absolutely smoke the secondary of the Giants. An absolute push over there. Tommy DeVito, a hey! uh, one or more passing touchdowns may uh, secure this in garbage time. He's done this in back to back games. Uh, Washington, uh, number 30 in EPA per play pass defense. So they've been god awful in that capacity. So I'm going to take advantage of the matchup there. Well, Logan Thomas leg, numero trace, two or more receptions. He had four catches in the first game and is getting around five targets per game. So I think he'll easily achieve that. And scary Terry McLaurin, boo, 45 or more receiving yards. Had over 90 in the first matchup against a G-man and really going to be taking advantage of this week as secondary. So uno, dos, tres, cuatro, mi amigos. You put all four of those legs together at BetMGM. A cool plus two. 10. Elsewhere in bonus time, let's stick with the NFL and some more player propage that I'm digging in on. Um, give me Tommy DeVito again. Hey, I'm back, baby. Yeah, and I'm betting on you on the over rush yards. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's a soft number. But it's not the number that I care about. It's that freaking voice you keep doing. Bada big, bada boom, <laughs> deal with it, Landy. All right, here, let me give you the reasons why I love Tommy DeVito on the over rush yards. It's 19 and a half. Remember uh, last week it was 11 and a half, and he absolutely crushed the over on it. It's going to be more of the same. I think he's going to run for the 30 plus. Now he's gone 12, 17, and 41 on the ground in the last three games. He's averaging around, around four or five rush attempts per contest. Washington, middle of the pack, though, and pocket pressure rate at 21%. Five quarterbacks have run for at least 20 against them as they're going to 25.3 rush yards per game. So, yeah, Lundy, suck on this. I'm taking the over 19 and a half rushing yards with my guy, Tommy DeVito, who's still living at home because uh, mom is a good cook and she makes his bet. Uh, elsewhere, Christian Kirk, give me the over 58.5 receiving yards against the Tennessee Titans. Kirk is, uh, in my opinion, and really uh, look at the numbers, the indisputable number one target and favorite 
of Trevor Lawrence. He's number 18 in route win percentage. So he's slick and savvy in the open field, getting that separation, seeing 7.9 targets per game. He's hit the over on this prop five times this season. And he's getting a lot of Eric Garer, who's given up a 93.4 passer rate. It was assignments out of the slot. Tennessee, uh, mediocre number 19 EPA per play pass defense. 11 guys have the over on this. I think Kirk reaches at least 60 yards. All I need is 59, and we cash a winning ticket. And one other prop I'll leave you with is this. Uh, I, there's no number on Joshua Kelly yet. Uh, take it on the Green Bay Packers. He is the second fiddle to Austin Eckler. For the L.A. Chargers, if that number is somewhere in the mid-20s, slam the over on it. Uh, Green Bay, number 25 in rush EPA defense. They've been a sieve on the ground. They're giving up 105.9 rush yards per game uh, in a contest, which uh, could be close because the Chargers always play down their level of competition. I, I feel Kelly's going to get probably seven, eight carries in that one and eclipse 30 yards. So uh, whatever that number opens at. Uh, check your favorite sports book. I will take the over. Let's go with the college road. But I got three quick bets for you there. St. Mary's on this Friday. I'm laying the un punto against San Diego State, arguably the game of the day. And there is a just myriad options you could bet on in college basketball starting at like now. If there's already a game that stepped off at 1030 Central Time at Dave Time on this Friday. Uh, but I like the Gales to bounce back uh, from their recent loss against the Aztecs. Uh, both these teams uh, decent defensively, though uh, St. Mary's far more outstanding defensively. Number 20 in adjusted defensive efficiency. San Diego State, though, just number 147 EFG defense. It's all about Aiden Mahaney, who's the best player on the floor. He is a guard who is lights out for St. Mary's, and they have a huge interior advantage in this game. San Diego State don't have a whole lot of size. St. Mary's uh, generally does, and they're usually Aussies. That come in, oi, 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 and just clean up on the glass and inside. So I think St. Mary's will cover the one in Las Vegas in that neutral court environment. Uh, JMU, James Madison, remember they beat Michigan State uh, to start the season. Give me the over on their team total. That's at 77 and a half. I pulled that at ESPN bets at a minus 120 juice. This is one of the fastest teams in the country. They're taking on Radford, number eight in adjusted tempo. They have scored. Now, yeah, they only scored 79 against Sparty, but that's Michigan State. A very good, solid defensive team. But they followed up with 107 and 113 points. They're going to score, I think, at least 80 against Radford, though Radford is number 311 in tempo, but middling 163 in EFG defense. JMU burning the nets from outside, shooting 42.9%, and in total, 1.085 points per possession. Again, I love the over there, 77.5 team total points. And going to your neck of the woods, Lundy, and Fort Fun, Colorado State. I'm going to lay the chalk. I know it's high at 17.5. Nico Medved's club welcoming UMKC. I think they're the Roos, the Kangaroos, if I remember they correctly. Are. Is that right? That is correct. Yeah. Uh, this line should be like minus 20 and a half. I, I think they're going to win by 20 or more points. A UMKC number 360 on the young year in EFG defense. Uh, so they have just been rolling out the red carpet for the opposition. Colorado State can flat out shoot the rock. Uh, they are netting 39.4% from outside. They have one of the best guards uh, out west and Isaiah Stevens. And listen to this, Lundy. I meant, again, UMKC, number 360 in the EFG defense. Why? They're giving up 58.1% inside the arc. But get this, 56.3% from the perimeter. Holy mother of God. Isaiah Stevens may drain like 10,000 threes in this game with his limitless range. So I'm going to lay... The full spread, the heavy chalk there of 17 and a half at a minus 110 juice there at Bet MGM. Woo! All right, time out of breath. We are out of time here on the Fade at Five Podcast. Do us a favor, drop us a rating and a review if you enjoy this lovely audio podcast. Also, fade or follow us on the X. We're always trying to give it to you. Uh, check out Lundy is free spreadsheet picks. He's kicking ass in hockey. Are you shocked? At Nate Lundy, I'm doing the same, uh, but not touching hockey. College football, college basketball, the NFL. Those are my fortes at Noisy Cuevos. For the Oregon State Beaver grad, we think. 
Uh, good luck uh, to your OSU Beavers. Maybe they're going to topple uh, Washington. Oh, I didn't give a pick in that game. Oh, here it is, Lundy. Extra bonus time on SGP. Oregon State money line. They're going to take this sucker. Uh, and I'm going to take the total down to 53 and a half and take the over. You put those two together at Bet MGM plus 130. Mic drop. Lundy is not happy with me because everybody no. is on Oregon State, including me, for no. a reason. No. But oh. Okay, first of all, Penix is the guy that I like the most out of the quarterback crew that we've been talking about so much uh, in college football. And Oregon State's secondary scares the shit out of me. They scare well, me, Brad. Just run the damn ball and let Mother yeah. Nature do her work because yeah. it's going to be yeah. rain Brad, drenched in Brad, Corvallis. Yes, but Damian Martinez doesn't play corner. That's my concern, okay? Right, best well. running back best running back in college football, but he doesn't play on the defensive side, and that's why I'm so worried about Penix. I'm so worried about Penix burning this secondary. OSU, baby. Uh, say with pride, Lundy. I'm out of here. Nate, Lundy, you're also out of here. Good luck to your beeves. Uh, good luck to my Lundy. Just score 10 points. You're going to beat Iowa and Iowa City. Until next time, as always, feed or follow. That is up to you.